Hello everybody, it's Rob Holman with Northwest Fishman Reports. It's September 1st and today's the dove opener here in central Washington. I'm out with my friends Shelby Ross and Bobby Loomis of Max Lure. We're going to hunt a little bit this morning and then go out on the Potholes Reservoir chasing some fish. Keep watching, it's going to be a good show. Beautiful morning out here for the dove opener. We're getting a little bit of shooting action. Not uh, hot and heavy by any stretch, but uh, should be a great day. Morning, everybody. We're out here uh, on opening day of dove season with Shelby Ross, and Rob Holman. We're having fun. It's not hot and heavy yet, but it's gonna. We've got lots of shells and we got time. Is that the key, Bobby? That's the key. Look at the size of that dove over there. <laughs> Where you got going, Shelby? Another morning dove. Make another popper. They are fabulous eating, not a whole bunch of meat on them, but they are great eating. First uh, chance of the year to get out and hunt, so shooting a few doves this morning. All right. You got a, a recommended recipe for those? Breast the bird, take the breast, uh, half a jalapeno filled with cream cheese, chunk of dove wrapped in uh, honey maple bacon, put it on the Traeger, the barbecue, the bacon's done, it's done, fabulous. So what's the trick to, to dove hunting? Is that go all day or? Oh, generally, you know, the birds are gonna fly in the morning and, and uh, go out to feed, then they'll come back and, and uh, go roost during the day and then in the evening they'll go out and feed again. So you'll get, you know, a good flight in the morning, a good flight in the evening. In the middle of the day, you go fishing. So it's a good day. What you got there, Rob? Hey, Shelby. It's my first morning dove here in Washington State. Thank you. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be good. Get a few more of these, huh? And get some fishing in. Absolutely. So it was an incredible shot, if I do say so myself. And it's trailing. <laughs> Bobby's going with it. He's like, yeah, go, go. Yeah, it was flying away from me, 150 yards. <laughs> Got it right in the head. 400 yard job. 400 yard head shot, the first dub. These are really hard to hit. No, this is a lot of fun, and there's a lot of action to this. It's fun for everybody. Shelby's gonna talk a little bit about youth hunts and other opportunities. Any hunting in Washington State requires hunter safety certification and you can get more information at wdfw.wa.gov. So I'm here with 16-year-old uh, Hunter LaFrance after a fabulous dove hunt. You guys had uh, a lot more action than we did and you got a real bonus mm -hmm. there, a double-banded uh, dove with a reward band for $100 is a pretty uh, rare uh, thing to get. And uh, so. How many years have you been hunting, Hunter? So this is my second year hunting and this is my first time ever going dove hunting. So this is really cool because it's the first time I've ever been out here, first time I've ever shot a banded bird and it came with a reward band. So that, it's really cool. You enjoyed the dove hunting? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Compared to the duck hunting, what do you think? Yeah, duck hunting is kind of slower paced and dove hunting, it's, oh, they're right there and shoot them. 
and you don't have to wait and hunker down. You just sit there and just wait. So second year hunting, hunter safety. How was that? It was pretty fun, but it it was just long, and the guy liked to talk about a lot of stories. So do you notice in dove hunting, with just one day doing it, that several of those safety things that were drilled into you became really important? The birds are zipping by so fast, easy to uh, get uh, where you're almost shooting out of that zone, and you just have to really, uh, there's, there's a lot of caution required with, with the dove hunting, where the, the ducks generally are a little bit slower. Yeah, but with, with dove hunting, it's, oh, they're going that way, and oh, I can't shoot them anymore. They're in, they're in the other guy's zone. That's critical to yes. having a having a safe hunt absolutely yes so we got a mess of doves looks like you've got a project there with the with the cleaning table yes i do it's, it's going to take a minute and uh, i think we're going to uh, try to put some on the barbecue this evening that's going to be really be fabulous good. eats we're going to go try and catch some fish so we're hunting today uh, outside of moses lake and we're on we're on private land and a farmer was uh, gracious enough to uh, allow us permission to hunt and that access is uh, critical to having a good hunt a lot of times there are some public areas that uh, can produce quality dove hunts but uh, i kind of like the private deal especially on opening day you just don't have a crowd of uh, other hunters around you but uh, yeah, getting permission to hunt the property is is critical to a lot of our hunting and so we try to do everything possible to uh, not uh, burn that bridge with the farmer and uh, cleaning up the trash, making sure you leave nothing behind and uh, not uh, damaging any, uh, any equipment or uh, anything else. And, and some hunters in the past have uh, kind of gotten a bad rap for damaging irrigation equipment and, and shooting stuff they shouldn't be and so forth, so uh, critical to maintain that relationship with the farmer in order to continue to access the property. You know, one of the one of the big things, you know, with the uh, uh, hunting private property like that, always make sure you pick up your empties. I mean, empty, empty shell casings is no different than garbage. And, you know, leaving those around is all, is all it does, just, it's not good, it's plastic. It's not gonna deteriorate, I mean, it'll be there forever. Um, you know, you pick that stuff up. It, it's just a good thing, and you know, it's a courteous thing to do, especially when you're on private property. Today we're gonna fish jigs, and we're gonna fish Dick Knight spoons for pinks. The jigs are super simple. You don't need a really elaborate setup or anything, or even a really high-end rod. These are just seven foot, four to 10 pound rods. I have 15 pound Power Pro Super Slick on my reels. Just a, you know, a 2000 to 3000 size reel is perfect. And I tie straight to my jig. Using 15 pound braid, I'm able to not have stretch with my line, but I can still break it at the knot if I get stuck instead of having to cut line and leave a bunch of braid in the water. So with a jig, we tie straight to the line. With a Dick Knight, We have a three-way swivel, a bass weight, or however, whatever kind of weight you want to use, a leader to my dick knight. And I always fish number ones for pinks and coho and everything else. I just like fishing number ones. But same setup works for those. Or with dick knights, sometimes I like a longer rod, makes it a little easier to cast the longer leaders. With a jig, we're gonna be twitching the jigs for the pinks. So we're going to cast out. And where we're fishing right now is about 12 feet deep. So I let it sink a little bit, reel up my slack. I do one jig, one reel, and I drop my rod, let it sink for a second. One jig, one reel, let it sink. And then you turn that into a more fluid motion. So a jig, reel, and just like that, you don't need to make big jigs. You don't want to consistently reel. You just want a nice twitch and just kind of reel up your slack or a little less than your slack, the fish will bite it as the jig falls. So you want the jig going up and down and as the jig falls, the fish will bite. And when you pick up, it'll just feel heavy. You wanna set the hook, cause that's a fish. And I like to tell people, I'd rather have you set the hook on a log 
then miss a fish because you thought it was a log. We can get these jigs out of the logs pretty easily, or with this 15 pound braid, we can break them off. But just a nice consistent jig like this, and you can change it. You can do some smaller, faster ones, or you can do some slower, a little bit bigger ones and figure out what they want that day. Big old hen. Really nice right hen. Too. That's a beautiful fish. I love them in the morning. We're going to go out here and target some walleye and we're probably going to catch several different species as we target the walleye. There's some large mouth, some small mouth, perch, crappie, bluegill, occasional trout, and hopefully some walleye. I think I've fished this time of year up here. Well, I know I haven't. Did you forget your ghillie suit? What are you doing, Shelby? Rigging up a super slow death in UV burst. My favorite color, baby perch. Can that be pretty effective this time of year? Year round. Yeah, I was gonna say that, that one fishes year round. That, that one seems to fish year round in most most places that have perch. We're, we're actually trying to target walleye, but like Shelby said, you know, with the water down like this, uh, water temps the way they are, you've got, you know, a tremendous amount of fish out here and uh, you just never know what, what you're going to get. Is there anything specific to this time of year, Shelby, that you you do. So we're fishing these uh, submerged humps. There's just a shallower hump out here. It's kind of a flat. You can see it on screen here, maybe. And uh, that's uh, pretty much the only structure that's uh, still in the water. Everything else, all the weeds and cover, is high and dry. With the lake drawn down, oh, probably drawn down almost 20 feet from full pool. And so the only structure are these drop-offs off of these humps. That's where the bait fish are. That's where the walleye are eating the bait fish. So we're fishing around those. Yep. Up and down these submerged humps in the middle of the reservoir. Well, this is interesting. Possibly the first fish of the day. It's quite a fight, Shelby. Nice. Very nice. We could have uh, anything from a trout to a big walleye on here, huh? Now you're hung up on me. Or we could have Bobby. No, there's a fish. Oh, I know you got. No, you got a fish on. <laughs> it's just that you're around me. Here it is. Oh, it's a bluegill. Bluegill. Pretty big bluegill. So blue. So bluegill are in here, and and uh, a lot of people like to fish for these, right? They're great eating, fun little fighters. This one's fighting pretty good. Do you, do you net them when you bring them in, Shelby? Or you just flip them in here? You just lift them up. Pretty good bluegill. That's a nice bluegill. Uh-huh. Yum. Oh, well, we got another one. Oh, we just let go, right there. Couldn't see what it was. But well, we're finding some action here. First uh, 20 minutes or so on the troll. We'll be right back with more Northwest Fishing Reports and Shelby Ross, and Bobby Loomis, right after this. Another fish on? Yeah, we're, we're back and we got a fish and it's another bullhead. But there's a lot of action going on here. Shelby, let's deal with this thing and get back to fishing. Got going here, Shelby. I'm not sure yet. 
fish on, and it's another bullhead. So what's the deal with all these bullheads? Well, they're, they're very hungry and they're a pain in the rear. <laughs> well, there's a couple species of bullhead and, and they're, what are they considered? So, yellow. I think this is a brown bullhead. The yellow yeah. ones are, are lighter in color, more yellowish. And that's about an average size. They are edible. I wouldn't call them first choice in table fare. But there's some people who eat them. I think we need to find a new spot that uh, we can get away from the bullheads. What are the, what are the wrecks for those? I don't think they're regulated. Gotcha. They're not very prized, but some people do. No. Like some people do eat them. There isn't a whole bunch of meat on them. Their rib cage is a, a big chunk of the of the side, and so the, the fillet is fairly small. Hey Shelby, you just moved us over. Are you changing the program? We are. We're going to put out some crankbaits as well as a a, a wiggle hoochie uh, lure from Max Lure, and uh, see if we can. Uh, that's walleye. So that are we gonna we're gonna still be trolling, right? Yes. Uh, considerably faster than we were with the worm harnesses. We're gonna put the crankbaits out. We'll put uh, some planer boards out as well as the uh, wiggle hoochie from Axler, and uh, we'll cover a lot more water than we were bottom bouncing, and uh, see if we can uh, get some walleye to cooperate. So that crankbait, you've got that directly tied on the line? Correct. Uh, in clear water, uh, a, uh, a leader is a good idea. Our water this time of year is not very clear, not critical. You can tie direct to the snap. And then we put a lot of line out? We're putting uh, 120, 130 feet out, and that's the maximum dive depth with a number five uh, flicker shad. And uh, so it'll be running about uh, between 11 and 12 feet. When these cleaner boards are out, what are we looking for? We're looking for fish on both sides of the boat with the side imaging, and you can adjust the amount of line to get that cleaner board out there the right distance from the boat to put a, right, the bait right on top of the fish. And when they hit? When they hit, the uh, flag will go down on the board, and uh, it will slow the boat and reel it up, unhook the flag, and uh, Pull the fish the rest away. <laughs> you don't like the boat, huh? No, it doesn't like the boat. There you go. They're growing. All right, we got our first walleye in the boat today. Nice job, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, we didn't have a chance, you know, to grab the camera to yeah. get that reel in, but. <laughs> it's all right, we got one. Yeah. Let's turn go, it for in. Some, go for some more. Yeah, we're, it's turning into the multi-species day. Let's do it. Egg, yeah, multi-species. We're good, we're, we're good. good. <laughs> oh, you got another fish. We got a fish. On the wiggle bill. Yeah. The wiggle bill? Yeah. The Max Lure Wiggle Bill? The Max Lure Wiggle Bill.
don't know, it's a bigger fish, that's for sure. What that means, I have no idea. It could be Mr. Bowhead. Uh, here, come back by me, it's way behind the boat. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going to take it right out the back. Nice job. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. A little wrestling match there. Yeah. Nice job, Bob. Nice fish, Bob. Yeah. Good fish. We'll take that Sweet. all day long. Heck yeah. Okay. Not only is it heating up fishing, it's heating up on the water. So we might be heading in shortly. Be sure to check out Ross Outdoor Adventures for more pothole opportunities and check out maxlure.com for a full suite of all their products. For Northwest Fishing Reports, I'm Rob Holman. We'll see you on the water. Any hunting in Washington State requires How do you feel about shooting spinner decoys? <laughs> we don't know, ask Rob. <laughs> well, you are the expert, the foremost expert. Say something wise, Bob. <laughs> Say something wise. <laughs> exactly.